Hello everybody and welcome back to the sanctuary. I'm your host Professor C and we'll be doing some more A&P today. Specifically we're going to look at the final bone that's considered the cranial bone and that is the sphenoid bone. So let's talk about it. All right our first shot here is a skull that's been the bones have been colored. Let's just go over them real quick see if we remember them. There is a frontal bone right in blue in the pink, there's our ethmoid bone, the one we covered in our previous lecture. This little Christigali sticking up right here. Uh, here's our temporal bone. Again, here's the rocky petrous portion of the temporal bone. Here's the flat squamous portion of the temporal bone. Here's our friend occipital bone and our foramen magnum. So who's left behind? Well, I guess we could talk about the parietal bones out here in green, forming the outside lateral portions of the skull. But really what's important in this talk is the yellow bone in the center known as the sphenoid. I call it the butterfly bone or the vampire bat bone because it makes more sense to me to study it that way. So this is the superior aspect and it's often referred to as a keystone bone. And what that means is that it articulates with every other cranial bone. So again, I just showed you all the bones. Notice how that yellow one does articulate with the blue, the pink, the green, the brown, and the tan colored bone, the occipital. So it's called the keystone bone of the cranium, the cranial keystone. I bet you money there's going to be a facial keystone bone in the facial bones. Okay, something I can clearly see here are these wings that stick out. So here's one of the wings. That's a greater wing, and I can draw one on this side as well. There's a greater wing of the sphenoid on either side. And then above it here, these little triangular doodads. These guys are called the lesser wings and it's a real good picture just to show you that from the beginning so greater wings and lesser wings of the sphenoid they're a good place to look if you want to know kind of what aspect you're seeing i'm looking for the front from the back from the top if you see them like this then you're looking from the top okay another shot from the top and off to the right i've put a lateral sphenoid uh, for one particular purpose so let's check out more structures of the sphenoid superiorly Okay, let's play the game Vampire Bat, right? So let's take this. This here, I know, is a lesser wing. And I'm going to put it here, a lesser wing. Now, sometimes I call those the ears of the bat because it looks like he's got two eyes here. He's got this mouth, right? And this mouth is like coming to bite you like he's a vampire bat. You see that? So the lesser wings are his ears. The eyes are called the optic grooves, sometimes known as optic canals. Again, why not foramen? You got me. Uh, different people have named these different structures over the years, and I'm just telling you the most common things they're referred to. So right here, I can put OP just for optic. Those are the optic grooves or the optic canals. You're going to see the optic nerves go through there that connect the eyeball to the brain. The mouth is the cella tersica. All right, and we're going to have to get into this more. I'm kind of obscuring it by drawing this mouth with teeth, but I just want you to see where it would be. I'm going to put ST for right now before we get to the details. There's the cella tersica. Cella refers to a saddle, and tersica refers to the country of Turkey, so a Turkish saddle. A saddle without the stirrups is where the original name came from, but we'll look at parts of that in just a second here, actually. If I could draw the cella tersica on this side, I would draw like that. Okay, again, here's a lesser wing over here. Here's a lesser wing over here. And then the greater wing is back here, and then the greater wing is back here. So we're looking from the side here where this mouth doesn't really look like a mouth anymore. So what you have to picture, if you want to get this concept of the cella tersica down, is imagine something sitting in here that looks kind of like that. And I know it looks kind of weird at first, but this is called a pituitary gland and it will hang down from the brain and it's got two lobes. So it kind of dangles in there like that. Think of it as a cowboy's butt sitting in a saddle. Remember I said the cella tersica means Turkish saddle. So picture a cowboy sitting in that saddle and it'll help you remember that the pituitary gland sits in that spot. Of course, the pituitary gland is very important. We want to keep it protected in a little bony saddle. So the entire structure 
is called Acella tersica. However, it does have different pieces parts. So let's look at the bat mouth some more. Okay, the dorsum cellae is the back of the saddle. It's this bony ridge right on the back. And if I could draw it here, there's dorsum cellae, the back of the saddle. It's kind of like the front of the saddle, but it's the back of the saddle, dorsum meaning back, cellae meaning saddle. So the whole thing is called a cella tersica, but the bony back part is called the dorsum cellae. Now, another word for the pituitary gland is the hypophysis. And so you may see this root word hypophysial, right? And you may see this adjectival form of hypophysis. We know what a fossa is, is an indention or a depression. So if I could in red here on the right side, I'm drawing right here the smooth bottom. The smooth bottom, that's the hypophysial fossa. That's where the pituitary gland will sit. That's the cowboy's butt sitting in the saddle. So if I could draw it on my superior picture, it would be the open mouth. There is the hypophysial fossa. If the dorsum cellae is in white, the hypophysial fossa is in red. Here is a lesser wing. Here is a lesser wing. Here's a greater wing. And here's a greater wing, right? And notice they've got some holes along the periphery of that greater wing, and we're going to try to name those foramina, those holes. Just to kind of recap, I know we've got our optic grooves here, the eyes of the bat. I know we have our cella tersica here, the mouth of the bat. I know I have my dorsum cellae, the back of the saddle, and my smooth bottom known as the hypophysial fossa. Okay, so let's talk about the other structures we haven't seen yet. And again, in this skull down below, the sphenoid is the pink bone there. And I can make out, see if you can make out the lesser wings and the greater wings and the cella tersica. Okay. Optic canal, we already got. No problem here. In the pink picture, it would be right here and right here. The two optic canals. Remember, you can call them optic grooves as well. And I'm sure some places do call them optic foramina. Superior orbital fissure. This one's tricky because it's hard to see it from this aspect. If you could peek under the lesser wing, and I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to kind of cheat. If you could look under here, you would notice, and I'll do it on the other side too, you would notice a long crack. And that is called the SOF, S-O-F. I'll write it here. S-O-F, SOF, superior orbital fissure. I'll write it on here too, S O. -F. F, the superior orbital fissure. Again, it's under the wing, and I've kind of cheated to draw it on there, but that's where it would be, is under the ears of the bat, you'd find a long crack called the superior orbital fissure. And then if you do a kind of a one, two, three from that point, you can get the rest of them. So there's a small hole here. There's a really obvious one here, and that's usually the landmark. And there's a teeny, 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 tiny hole right on the spine there of the sphenoid. And if you were to name these, it spells out rose without the E, R-O-S. So it's sof ross, right? Those are those holes there, the foramina that you find on the greater wing of the sphenoid. The big long one under the lesser wing is superior orbital fissure, sof, and the others are called foramen rotundum, that's the R, foramen ovale, that's the landmark you can see on almost all the pictures. And the teeny, teeny, tiny one way down at the spine is called foramen spinosum. So soft ross will help you with that when you're troubled by it. Notice here on the picture down below, uh, the pink bone, that's sphenoid, you can see that too. This would be foramen rotundum. This would be foramen ovale. And this is foramen spinosum. Now this guy here is our old friend foramen lacerum. And I've went ahead and added it with an asterism just to remind us foramen lacerum is in the boundary between sphenoid and temporal. And I can draw it over here too. There's foramen lacerum. If you want to try it one more time, this is foramen rotundum, this is foramen ovale, and this is foramen spinosum. Okay, this is a posterior view. So when I tilt this thing forward, if you want to think of it that way, we can sort of see other structures. Let's name what we know first, so we're confident at that point. 
I see this big bat ear. That must be a lesser wing. There's one on the other side too. That means the eyes of the bat here. Those are the optic canals. Now I've got the big greater wing over here on either side. Easy to spot that one. And I should be able to see the foramina fairly easily. So let's see if we can spot them. What was it called? Soft. There's soft. I can see it. See how it's that long black crack there? Soft. And then I have foramen rotundum, foramen ovale, and then you can't see it there, but teeny, teeny, teeny foramen spinosum would be right there. So there's the soft ross. Now, what do we not know, right? What do we not know? Well, when you talk about the body of the sphenoid, it's this area all right in here, right? This that I'm drawing the hash along, that's the dorsum cellae. That's the back of the saddle. And if I could look down on the other side of it, I could see that large place where the cowboy sits called the cella tersica. So that's dorsum cellae right here, but this is the body of the sphenoid. And if I could look inside of it, I could find an opening. And that opening would be called the sphenoid sinus, but we cannot see it here, although I will show it to you in other figures in the future. So there's where you would find the body, and then internally you would find a sinus. A sinus is always a cavity inside of a bone, but we'll get to that in another talk. What's new to us completely here is probably these dudes hanging down, and you could call them the feet of the bat if you think the bat's headed towards you, but it's kind of a stretch there. These are called the pterygoid, pterygoid processes. And there's two parts. There's a medial part, and that's right there, the medial lamina. I'll draw that one here, medial lamina. And then there's the lateral lamina, lateral lamina of the pterygoids. If you enjoyed that talk, check out another one. Thanks for watching that one. See you for the next one. Bye-bye.